So iPad, you think you're a computer, huh? Pfft, big talk. I guess we'll find out whether you are or you aren't. <laughs> Apple's been trying to make the iPad into a computer for a long time now. And that's not, you know, this is how I started the actual iPad short circuit as well. It is a computer. We all know it's a computer, guys. But now Apple has, you know, released the Magic Keyboard attachment with not only the Magic Keyboard with the scissor-based switches that they had, which was good, and then switched out with a worse one, the butterfly keyboard. It also has a trackpad on an iPad? How many pads can we handle? The answer is two. And that's why we're here today. We got the iPad Magic Keyboard, and we're gonna see if once you put it on the 12.9 inch iPad, or you put the 12.9 inch iPad Pro onto this one, does that a computer make? Off it comes. That's pretty heavy. That, uh, that, that feels like half of, a, half of a laptop, sure enough. Let's unwrap this sucker. Okay, I'm excited because I've seen a lot about this uh, in the past few weeks. We got the, uh, you know, the iPad Pro 2020 edition, and I've already done a whole review on that on LTT, and we also did a short circuit on it. And now we have the thing that could make it a laptop. Does it, oh, oh, that's some resistance. Like I expected this to be a folio case. Like, like, on, the old, like on the old folio cases, they're very loose, you know? When you open it up, it's kind of floppy. This is like, immediately I'm getting some resistance. Oh, and then it stops. Boom. And then it keeps going. This is really weird. Designed by Apple in California. Tell me about yourself, iPad. Open Magic Keyboard and fold back to attach iPad. Adjust your viewing angle is needed. Okay, I'll, we'll see how good that is. Charge iPad using the USB-C port. So that's one of the interesting things about this. It adds an extra USB-C port, not on that side, but on that side. Right there. Also apologize to anyone seeing the top-down camera right now. My hands look grody from overwashing, but you know, we're all in the same boat with that, hopefully. That one didn't, that one isn't, wasn't a success. <laughs> Should I bother trying this out without the iPad on it? No. On the iPad goes. Boom. That is magical. Okay, we got a bit of like, Oh, that actually goes farther back than I thought it would. Pretty impressive. It looks like it's floating. It's like levitation. Wingardium Leviosa, you know what I'm talking about? Can you use it on your lap? That's a great question, Andy. Yes, you can. It's a laptop. I guess so. If you can use it on your lap, it's a laptop. But look at this. I'm using it on my lap. <laughs> you know what? Right off the bat, I want to see how easy it is if I was like, Oh, I'm using my, I'm using my tablet, doob dee doob doo doo And then, oh, gotta go, gotta bring my keyboard. Failed the first test. Oh, gotta go, boom. Okay, that was a lot better. Maybe it's just lack of practice. Okay, so that's an issue right away. How do I, it's not, usually with, you know, with those, uh, with these modern laptops, there's kind of an easier way to open it up. You put it down, and you want to lift up the screen. <laughs> you gotta like squeeze. You gotta squeeze your fingers in there. So when you put it down, open it up. <laughs> it's pretty impressive how like you know when you do open it up, it kind of just like flips into place. You'd think that it, it it looks fragile. When I first saw the launch videos for these and the kind of sizzle reels, it looks like it looked kind of fragile, but it does feel very sturdy. Let's find out how much it weighs. After this word from our sponsor. <gasps> what? That's right, this short circuit is brought to you by PIA. They're a VPN that keeps you safe and secure with a protected IP. You can connect up to five devices on Windows, Linux, iOS, Android, Mac OS, all of those good guys. And it comes with an internet kill switch so you can stay in control of your connection. Check them out and their 30 day money back guarantee at the link below. So how much do they weigh? That's what I was saying, let's find out. Oh geez. Okay, in kilograms, okay, 0. 0.608. And this thing, 0. 0.656. This is actually heavier than the iPad. So you get yourself a computer, and then you get yourself a keyboard that weighs more. <laughs> now, I understand why they did that, though. 
it's because when you sit the iPad on it, it has to stay upright. If the iPad weighed more than the keyboard, it would just kind of tip over, which you know would make things more interesting, but no one wants that. Okay, so before I, uh, you know what? Enough of that, let me talk about the keyboard. Let's find out. I'll log in, let's bring up a note. Oh wait, I have a, oh, I have a mouse now. I completely forgot I was gonna start using the iPad with my finger. Now I already kind of talked about this when I did the full iPad review, but I think using it with a trackpad is a whole different experience. You move the mouse around and there's like noticeable drift. Maybe, there, maybe there's a bit more of that using the iPad. Ooh, that feels kind of nice. I'm not gonna lie, that's a keyboard. Crazy how we're using this iPad as if it's a computer and not an iPad. Oh, I feel like the travel is even less than I remember on similar Magic keyboards, but maybe that's just my, you know, rose colored glasses. I'm writing a, uh, writing a little soliloquy here. Okay, so to compare that, I'm gonna bring up the other regular, geez Louise, <laughs> iPad folio. So this is kind of what Apple was going with last generation, uh, was just this kind of like flippy, flobby, wibbly keyboard folio that's nothing special, you know? It was cool. It protected your, your iPad. It gave you a keyboard and, you know, in case you were like on the go and you needed to like answer some emails or something and needed to type out something. There's two positions to put the screen in and even when they're in there, it's like pretty wobbly. But this is what we were dealing with before. And this is obviously a huge upgrade. We've gone from a tablet with a dinky little keyboard attachment to something that looks a lot like an actual laptop. Do we have to call it a laptop now? Tap top. Tap top, to pad top. Okay, so over here. Hello, friend. This is an iPad and see now, okay, maybe I'm crazy, but I almost like this keyboard more. <laughs> Am I crazy? Why do I like that better? The keyboard is attached to an iPad and it's awesome. I might, I might have just been crazy for a second. You know, you know that happens sometimes. You can just like go insane for like ten seconds. Okay, no, never mind, never mind. All right, I, but but I think all that says is that the keyboard that they initially put in this thing, and I think I said when I reviewed it that this was a very impressive keyboard. But this is a real keyboard. This is like really good for a tiny keyboard, and this is like a magic keyboard. The trackpad is very small, as you can see. It's almost like the the Surface Pro trackpads. It looks just like that, but it feels like an Apple trackpad. Like this is smooth. And I know I complained about the the drifting, but it almost like works well with this. Am I just being swayed by the Apple like polish? I need to compare it to like a, a real laptop in order to kind of take it down a notch. An LG Gram 17, or as I like to call it, the GAM, because the R fell off. <laughs> It's a 17 inch, so obviously it, it looks huge compared to the 12.9 inch. But like, you know, the 12.9 inch iPad is around the same size as like a 13 inch, you know, laptop. So it's maybe not a super fair comparison, but what I really wanted to compare was its versatility. One of the great things about light laptops is they're like a full computer and you sit them down, you can lift the lid with one hand and you got, you know, something going on there. Well, that's what you expect, big, nice, big trackpad over here. Now I put it down as if I'm going to work somewhere. I have to, you have to get your fingernails in there. So it's a little annoying and I'm not seeing the same kind of like versatility. I mean, it's nice. It, it, it goes back to a, enough of an angle. Yeah, this isn't bad. All right. You would really seal the deal for the iPad pro as a laptop is if they because it has keyboard and like full mouse support now, if they get, put some games on here that you could play with mouse and keyboard, that would be something. You know what I just noticed? This keyboard is missing a row of stuff. So like we got, we got the arrow keys, we got all this normal stuff, we get up to the number row and then there's no function row and there's no escape button. How am I gonna escape from things? Now I know there's probably, there's probably a ton of shortcuts. That's what I heard, there were shortcuts somewhere. If I, uh, there must be something that works. Um, uh, hello? Um, screw it. 
I hate iPads. <laughs> Command, oh, oh, thank you. Oh, you're a, you're a Mac user, aren't you, Andy? Yeah, what do you, what do you wanna see? Command W. Oh, it closed the tab. It did. What are other regular Mac things? Command Shift 4, what does that do? Oh! There's no escape key. That would That is a situation where I'd like to have an escape key just to be like, get, out, get me out of here. It's a bit frustrating that Apple kind of went this direction again, because it looked like they were using the iPad to kind of go in this bold new direction of like, hey, you know, you got desktop computers, you got laptops, and now we want to, to, to be able to have this new category, tablets, that are actual computers that you can use for work, not just entertainment machines. Why would I get this over a, a MacBook Pro? Who is buying this and why? Because this is the 12.9 the inch compatible version of the Magic Keyboard case is 350 bucks US. And Oof. the 11 the inch one is $300. So you're adding that onto the iPad Pro, which is already, you know, if you're getting one that you can use as your main computer, it's around $1,000 for like a good configuration on the iPad Pro plus a $350 keyboard. Why would you buy this instead of a MacBook or a capable Windows laptop? I don't know. It's in, you know, it's, it's like one of Apple's flagship things, so I can understand it being that expensive. I don't think it's justified to make it that expensive, but it makes sense for Apple to do that. Anyways, I'm excited to do the full review for this and uh, pretty impressed with the overall design and manufacture of it. I didn't really play around with the U extra USB-C port, but uh, we'll get more into that in the full review. For now, thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to Short Circuit for more of these type of videos. And don't forget that I love you very much.